Hello again, we're Newton Juniors. This MCA review is all about how to choose the right graph for the given information. So first off, we're going to start and talk about a few of the basic graphs that you might be given as options. First are line graphs. Line graphs are used to display data or information that changes continuously over time. Also, they allow us to see overall trends such as increase or decrease in data over time. This was in here twice. We're talking about stuff over time. Those line graphs are great for showing us what's happening over time. Are things going up, going down? What's happening? Where is the greatest increase? Where is the greatest decrease? Those line graphs are great for that. Next are bar graphs. Bar graphs are used to compare facts. The bars provide a visual display for comparing quantities in different categories or groups. So in comparing things for categories and groups, bar graphs can be great. They help see relationships quickly. It's easy to see. However, you should be cautioned. It can be difficult to read accurately, so be careful. And the reason why I say that is the bar graph might really mean to show you this. However, if they break the axis and skip a few, you might see something like this, which makes it look like that first one is four or five times big as that last bar, when actually that's not the case when you get to see the whole y-axis. So just be careful with the bar graphs. If you have a broken axis, meaning you skipped a few, remember that whole one, two, skip a few, 99, 100? Well, if you skip a few, that could skew what the bars look like. So be careful. Third one. Circle graphs, they're used to compare parts of a whole. They represent data visually in the same proportion as the numerical data in a table. Area of each sector is the same proportion as the whole circle as each item is to the total value in the table. So circle graphs are great for showing parts out of wholes. Histograms, if that word comes up, actually it's just a bar graph where bars touch. Okay, all, all bars just keep touching. Stem and leaf plots. Stem and leaf plots, that's where you know you'd be given data like 72, 56, 63, 78, 51. And you make the whole stem and leaf, you know, you have your 5, 6, 7, so 72, 56, 63, 78, 51. That's a stem and leaf plot, just in case you forgot. Those stem and leaf plots are great when you are analyzing large amounts of numbers. So when you have a lot of data coming in, stem and leaf plots are the one to choose. Okay, so we're just going to go through a whole bunch of examples and try picking the right graph. So I'm going to pause before each one and hope that you can guess it before I show you the answer. Here we go. Which is the best type of graph to show the number of hours spent playing piano each day for a week? So if you're playing piano each day for a week, which graph is going to show the best? It's going to be stem and leaf plot, double bar graph, line graph, or circle graph. And the answer is line graph, because we're showing something over time. We're showing what's happening over the week. How many hours did you practice? Which is the best type of graph to show the number of students who can swim and the number of students who cannot swim in each grade? So we're looking at each grade, those who can swim, and those who can't. Well, we're comparing data, we're comparing facts. So actually, that double bar graph is going to be the one that we want. The bar graph itself would be great to show me every grade who can swim, but when you throw in that double bar graph, now you can have two bars together, one showing me who can and who can't swim, who can and who can't swim. So double bar graph. Which type of graph would best show the number of computers at each school in the country? Or county, excuse me, county this time. Line graph, double bar graph, circle graph, or stem and leaf plot? The number of students in each school in the county. Well, that's going to be a lot of numbers, so we're comparing a lot of schools. So that's why we're going to use a stem and leaf plot, because we're comparing large numbers. Okay, next one. Which type of graph would you use to show the percentage of students who can speak Spanish, French, Italian, Italian, German, or no foreign language? This one would be circle graph because we're showing different groups, parts out of whole. So how, you know, how many speak Spanish? 
How many can speak German? How many have no foreign language? We're showing parts out of holes. So circle graph is the best option there. Okay, which type of graph would best show the population of New York City over the past 70 years? Hopefully you caught that we're doing this over the last 70 years, and therefore the line graph is the best for showing trends over time. Okay, which type of graph would you use to show the number of students who play each instrument? Stem and leaf plot, line graph, bar graph, double bar graph. So we're showing students who can play different instruments. Well, instruments isn't numerical data, so actually bar graph is the best because you can label the bottom of the bar graph as those instruments. Okay, which type of graph would best show the number of candy bars collected by each trick-or-treater in the neighborhood? Well, I don't know about you guys, but in some neighborhoods, there's a lot of trick-or-treaters. That's a lot of data. So hopefully, out of bar graph, circle graph, line graph, and stem and leaf plot, we are choosing stem and leaf plot. Okay? Which type of graph would best show the number of boys and the number of girls who like soccer, basketball, or tennis? Double bar graph, line graph, stem and leaf plot, or bar graph? Well, we're talking about boys and girls, so we have boys and girls, and then three different categories each. So actually in this case, double bar graph would be better than bar graph because one of the bars could show what the boys prefer and one of the bars could show what the girls prefer. Okay, which type of graph would be best to show the depth of the pond measured each month for a year? Double bar graph, line graph, circle graph, or stem and leaf plot? Again, we're measuring something over a year, so we're looking at that time, so line graph is the best. Which type of graph would best show the portion, proportion of students born in spring, summer, fall, or winter? Are we looking at a line graph, double bar graph, bar graph, or circle graph? In this case, we're looking for students born in certain months. So there's only four, excuse me, certain seasons. There's only four seasons to choose from. So how many were born in spring, summer, fall, winter compared to that whole year? What proportion was in each one? Circle graph would be the best because each season is part of the whole year. We're looking at a part out of a whole. Which type of graph would you use to show the number of swimmers and the number of divers practicing on several different days? Stem and leaf plot, pictogram, double bar graph or bar graph. Again, we have swimmers and divers over different days. So double bar graph would show me what the swimmers are doing and what the divers are doing over those days. Okay, which is the best type of graph to show the number of men and the number of women who prefer each flavor of ice cream? Bar graph, line graph, double bar graph, or stem and leaf plot. Again, we have women answering one way, men answering another way over all these different flavors of ice cream, so double bar graph would be the great best one to show what the men are saying, one to show what the women are saying. Which type of graph would best show the number of fish in each tank? Stem and leaf plot, bar graph, circle graph, or line graph? Well, if we're talking about fish in a tank, that could be a lot of fish, that could be a lot of tanks. So we're looking at stem and leaf plot. That's a lot of numbers, that's a lot of data. Okay, which type of graph would, graph would best show the population of a city each year for 10 years? Double bar graph, circle graph, line graph, pictogram. Line graph, once again, because we're showing trends over time. Okay, hopefully you caught on that that was a little repetitive. After a while, anytime that we started seeing trends over time, we're talking about a line graph. We were talking about a lot of data. We were talking about stem and leaf plots. When we were trying to compare what boys and girls or men and women thought, or divers and swimmers, we were using a lot of double bar graphs for those. Anytime we had part out of a hole, like the seasons out of a year, we were looking at a circle graph. Keep a couple of those things in mind. You should be able to pick the right graph every time.